There has always been two main reasons why I could never migrate from Lightroom to Capture One. Well, three if you consider the laziness of transforming your catalog and everything, but apart from that, HDR and Panorama. And they just released version 22 with which features? Exactly. So we're gonna test everything together, we're gonna compare the results, and by the end we're gonna be capable to decide if I or we should be changing editing softwares or not. E aí, I'm Manuel, Brazilian photographer and filmmaker, living in Italy, and in this channel I help with the tech tools to be creative. And today we're talking about an editing software called Capture One and these new features that were introduced in this new version. So if you're here, but you're not really sure what exactly are these features, let me show you really, really quickly. First of all, there's HDR, and this allows you to have a bigger dynamic range on any scene and with whatever camera you're using. This means that if you have a very bright spot and a very dark one, you can actually take multiple exposures of the same shot and the software is gonna combine them together. So the final result is something that just offers you the best of what each picture had. This one we've been seeing quite often in smartphone cameras, so if done right, it can be really useful. But panoramas are very, very underestimated. You could go from this to this, so it's not only about slapping a wide-angle lens, the whole perspective changes. Better or not, you're the one to judge, so it's one more tool you got. Let's waste no more time, let's just go to the computer, I'm gonna show you the Capture One interface, how to use these features and how they compare with Lightroom. All right, so let's do it. I've got a selection here of one set of pictures to do a panorama, which are these ones over here, and one set of pictures to do HDR. And I'm gonna launch also Capture One, which is here. You can check the link in the description for the trial version. And as soon as you download it, you're gonna have to insert the serial number and it's gonna be valid for 30 days. The serial number will be in your email or you can find it also under your account on the Capture One website. All right, so let's begin with HDR. So this is the main interface of Capture One and what you're gonna see is that there's no library or develop module like you find it on Lightroom. It's everything in the same place. So you can navigate through things here and you have all the tabs over here with all the develop modules that you can find on Lightroom. It's similar style. All right, so this is a very good example of when you're gonna need to do an HDR. This is a normal exposure image in which the dark part inside is so much darker than the bright part outside. So it's very difficult to recover both things with quality. And many people say that it doesn't make any difference, but I'm gonna show you in the end how much it makes. So the idea is you're gonna make two other exposures, two other pictures, set apart about two f-stops. This means one is gonna be brighter and the other one is gonna be darker, meaning you're gonna focus on the other ones just on the inner part here or only on the outside, mainly on the sky, which is usually the brightest part. So as you can see, we have one darker, which is actually even a little bit too dark, but it preserves all the details on the sky and one brighter in which we have much more detail about what's going on inside here. So what you're gonna do is just like select all of them, right click on one of them and just go to merge to HDR. And then Capture One will ask you two things. If you want to auto adjust, which means that when the pictures are all together, if you want it to automatically try to set it to a good starting point, and auto align, which means that if this picture was not taken with a tripod, you definitely need it to auto align so that everything matches and you don't have any strange disalignment of the columns or anything like that. So I'm just gonna leave both of them for us to see what happens. All right, when it's completed, it's gonna generate this DNG file, which is the HDR file, grabbing a little bit from each one of them. And you can see that it already tweaked many, many things here according to what we could imagine it would be the perfect thing to do. For me, what's outside is way too bright. So I'm just gonna push down the highlights here and see if we can recover a little bit more of information. And this is looking pretty good already. So let's make a comparison between the merged image and the original ones. So if you were to get the merged one and just raise all the way the shadows to see what's on the dark part over here, this is what you would see. Instead, if you try to do the same thing with this dark picture, let's see what's gonna happen. You see how much noise and how much color cast there is. And this is an extreme example because actually the middle exposure would be this one. But see how soft it is and also has some little bit of color tint over here. Instead, in the other one, you get nothing. It's so clean because it's actually getting a lot of it from this image here, which is the brightest one. But the brightest one, if you were to bring the highlights all the way down, you could only get up to here. So you can see that all over the horizon is a little bit too bright. Instead, if you go to the merged one, you can actually see so much better the blue over here and all this part is so much softer. Now, still this one feels a little bit too HDR for me, as you could call it, 
I mean that it still looks a little bit unnatural, but this is because you still have to play a little bit around with the editing, like for example, bringing down the curves a little bit, which still preserve a lot of the detail that you have in the picture, but you don't exaggerate this effect where everything is bright. I would totally bring down the shadows here a little bit. Anyway, you have much more control than if you didn't have this merged HDR image. Okay, so let's take a look now at this panorama. So here you're gonna see that not only I went from left to right, but I also went up and down. Meaning that instead of doing like three shots in a row, I actually did nine of them. So I went doing like a zigzag like this. So I start in the bottom left part and then I go up a little bit, a little bit upper. Then I go to the right, down, down, to the right, up. And this closes our nine pictures panorama that we're gonna do by selecting all of them with shift click in the first and the last one, and then just going to stitch to panorama. Then our capture one is gonna try to generate a preview for us to have an idea of how it's gonna be stitched together. All right, the preview is ready and now you can choose some different options up here, such as spherical, cylindrical, perspective, panini, this is how Capture One is going to try to stitch these photos together and it totally depends on how you shot them, which kind of lens. So as of now, we have spherical like this, which looks pretty good. Let's check cylindrical. And while you change here, Capture One also caches the image, so you can also switch back really quickly. So you can just generate them all going one by one and then go switching back just to make a quick comparison between them and choose which one looks best. So let's see which one looks less distorted. This one, the mountain looks a little bit farther away. This one, a little bit closer. This one looks a little bit more proportional. I'd say probably spherical looks pretty good. And now here you have also the option of choosing which size of the stitch you wanna do, because actually can result in a file that is just huge. Right now we're stitching together nine 24 megapixels pictures. This means that this file, in the end, considering that they have some coincidence between them, is going to be a 68 megapixel file. And by the way, to produce an image like this and have minimal problems stitching, you should totally guarantee that you have about 20 to 30 percent coincidence between the pictures you take. Meaning, for example, if you're shooting upwards, you're going to define a reference point and then include it in the upper part of the first picture. And it's also going to be in the lower part of the following picture you take, like you can see on the screen right now. And also this image is gonna be 10,000 pixels by 6,000, it's massive. I'm just gonna accept the maximum size here, stitch them together and let's see the result. Okay, so the panorama is ready and now you can see that you have a much larger picture than what we had individually with all the nine pictures separately. And the first thing you're probably gonna notice are these black bars all around here. And this is because the picture was taken handheld. So it's very difficult for you to do a perfect alignment within all the nine pictures. But it's not a problem. Now you just have to crop this in, not to leave any black bars. And this is one of the differences between Capture One and Lightroom already, because Lightroom can do this already automatically for you if you want. So I'm just gonna grab the crop tool here and I'm just gonna drag it in. And you see that by not being really careful when you're taking the pictures, you end up missing some parts of it. Because now, for example, I can't extend it downwards because there's this black part over here. Okay, so there it is. And now you can just edit this picture like it was a raw taken directly from your camera. But now here, there's something to point out. I noticed that there are some issues still with this panorama feature within Capture One. So I'm just gonna turn on the annotations here. And you're gonna see, for example, there are two parts that I found on this one that seems that the image was just like repeated like it was like a clone stamp or something like that. In this panorama, I found it here and also in this part over here, which you can see this big vertical line of repeated kind of like images of these trees. It's not a very severe and it doesn't happen everywhere on the picture, but it's always present. And if you are to print this picture, for example, that can be an issue. I tried creating this panorama five different times and in all of them, I had this kind of issues, but in different spots. What is quite curious is that these parts over here were entirely represented by one of the pictures inside the set. So actually, this is not even the stitching point, but still this happened. I'm gonna send this feedback to Capture One and we are probably gonna be seeing an update on the software very soon. Okay, so now let's check on Lightroom, the same tool and see how they differ from each other. So as you can see here, I have the exact same set of pictures and I'm just gonna select these three and do the HDR merge exactly like on Capture One. I just go to Photo Merge, HDR, it generates me a preview over here and I have also auto align and auto settings exactly like Capture One. I'm just gonna mark both of them like I did before. And this is one tool that we don't have on Capture One that is so interesting, which is the decoast. You can set from non low until high. And this is just gonna show you what is changing in between pictures if you have movement. In this example here, you don't have anything meaningful. 
but I'm gonna show you an example right after exactly for this one. And one other option that is really interesting is this create stack, which means that all three pictures that we are using to make this HDR are gonna be collapsed together like it was only one, making everything much more organized. So I'm just gonna choose here, merge, and it is done. Okay, so now on the screen, you can see both Capture One and Lightroom right after the merge on the HDR image was done. And as you can see, the auto settings on Lightroom make a much better job of delivering a quite ready image in comparison to Capture One. But still, all the information is there. So if you just lower the highlights and lower a little bit the exposure, you're gonna get more or less the exact same dynamic range as you get here on Lightroom. So let's take a closer look here. I'm just gonna raise up all the shadows. And as you can see, Capture One decided to take a little bit more from the bright image than Lightroom did. And regarding the details on the shadows, I prefer what Lightroom did with a little bit more neutral approach. But if you go in the center of the image and we just go here far, far away. Now, in this case, I prefer what Capture One did, keeping a little bit more neutral white color over here instead of this yellow cast that we can see here. And also it seems a little bit sharper than what Lightroom did. Now I try to make it look similar and I got to this point which looks pretty much the same. So there is some primary adjustments and some curve adjustments also. So even with all the differences in the initial image, after tweaking a little bit, you can just take this image wherever you want. And as work material, they're both great files. Let's compare our panorama. Okay, so let me recreate the panorama inside Lightroom exactly like we did inside Capture One. So it's going to photo merge and panorama. Now they have a very similar approach in which you can choose spherical, cylindrical or perspective. And it's gonna generate the preview here for us to check which one looks better which in this case also I think it's probably spherical, but Lightroom has some extra options over here, like the boundary warp, which lets you tweak a little bit inside the same perspective style that it shows. Like for example, inside spherical, you can make it warp a little bit and it almost completely makes the white parts go away doing like that. So probably I would actually go with 100 here, but there's also this option of fill edges, meaning that it's just gonna try to complete the parts that are missing with information and it actually does a really good job. This way we don't have to crop the image. And for example, one thing that we had to cut out from the other file in Capture One was the church tower over here, which in this one we don't have to do. Auto settings is turned on and it just makes the foreground pop a little bit more. And there's also the create stack, just like in HDR, which is just gonna comprise all the pictures together in one stack. Okay, so I'm just gonna go with these options here and merge. One thing you don't get in Lightroom though, is the option to choose how big you want this file to be. Lightroom is just gonna do its thing and you have no choice about it. Okay, so here we have it. Let's just compare now with Capture One. All right, so both of them look very similar. You can see what I told about the church tower over here that exists on Lightroom because it managed to fill the edges so we didn't have to crop in that much. But most of the files look absolutely the same. Regarding sharpness, you can see that it's very, very similar between one and the other. They just grabbed this part really from the original picture, which is exactly like this. The only difference really that I could tell was exactly on what I showed you before, which is these parts over here that seem to have been clone stamped or something like that, for which you can see that in Lightroom, there is no issue at all. It's this area here, yeah. So should be this line here, which just looks perfect on Lightroom. And while here, there's this strange repetition on the trees or something like that. Okay, so now let's make a quick comparison between Lightroom and Capture One regarding the HDR when there is movement to see what that the ghost option does. I chose these three pictures over here. I'm just gonna go to Photo Merge, HDR, we're on Lightroom, and it's just gonna show us, let me show you the de-ghost overlay. So this is the parts that it's really taking care of because they're in movement somehow. Maybe the plants were blowing with the wind, the people are walking, so it has to choose one of the pictures or a couple of them to make these things look still or look like it was belonging from one of the original images. So I'm just going to select high and merge these pictures and let's see what's it going to do. Now, as you can see, the result in the NG file looks like it's one of the original images. People are perfectly still. I don't see any kind of problem on the plants or on them. You can't see that anything is out of place. Now, one thing that is probably a very bad choice is that when doing this, it kind of like made the exposure good for the picture, but it shows the people from the darkest picture. So it means that we have a lot of noise going on in these parts over here. I can show you the original one was this one. So it's these shadows really raised up. So you really have to be careful in this case. And if one image has enough dynamic range for what you want to do, probably it's better sticking to only one or you really have to check deep after you do the merging. Let's check on Capture One what would be the result. 
So I'm just gonna choose here all the three images, go to merge to HDR, merge, and let's see what it's going to do. And now I remind you the capture one doesn't have the deghosting option, so it's probably gonna have some issues with this image. Okay, it is done in the same as before. It chose to have the exposure a little bit higher than what Lightroom does automatically, but the information is all there. The issue with this picture is that, as you can see, in the moving parts, there's a lot of gaps going on. So it can't really perform the deghosting really well. So you can see parts of the other pictures still in this picture over here. You can see here on the backpack, also up here. So differently from the panorama feature in which the details with problems were really small and you could actually still fix it, on this one, I think these files are actually not usable at all. So it seems like Capture One is going in the right way, but these tools are still kind of like in the early stages. All right, so in the end, what conclusion do we get from all of this? So in my opinion, Capture One is going in the right way by adding these features because it's something that Lightroom users are already used to and they've been using for a long time, so it's already incorporated into their workflow. If you compare both software's latest releases, you're going to see that Lightroom actually incorporated more interesting things in a professional way from Capture One than the opposite way around. But it's interesting to see that both of them are kind of like developing and seeing what the competitor is offering that they don't have and trying to do better. So as of now, if HDR and Panorama are really incorporated into your workflow like it is on mine, I don't think it's possible to migrate. I'm pretty sure Capture One is going to release some updates to try to improve this too by adding the deghosting function, by improving those teaching errors. As soon as there are some news, I will be doing some new videos for you guys. In the meantime, if you're not really willing to spend on a monthly basis on an editing software like Capture One or Lightroom, you could actually go for the Capture One Express that I've tested already here on the channel and you can see the video up here that is really, really interesting. It's a really good choice if you are a Sony, Fuji or Nikon user. It is more limited, but it gets the job done. All right, guys, if you have any questions about Capture One or Lightroom, please write them in the comment section below. And if you don't follow me on Instagram or Twitter, do so. Like this, you can see some of the backstage of the production of these videos and we can interact a little bit more. So I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.